Okay, so uh, I'm reading this statement from David Bourne, who is the OU president, Oklahoma president, Big 12 board chairman. He said, the board is unified in establishing a process to verify the proper institutional controls that are in place and sustainable. By taking these actions, the board ensures, desires to ensure that the changes that were promised actually made, that systems are in place to avoid future problems. This is all in regards to Title IX missteps at Baylor. What exactly is taking place between the Big 12 and Baylor? Well, the uh, board acted uh, at uh, on a conference call yesterday morning, and uh, it was a follow-up meeting from uh, a regular board meeting that we had on Friday where this topic was discussed. And uh, they just uh, feel like uh, Baylor is uh, uh, a ways down the path on the 105 recommendations from uh, Pepper Hamilton, the, the consulting law firm that, that did the study. And uh, this isn't uh, an additional investigation by the conference. We, we have um, no structure to, to investigate, but uh, rather this is uh, something uh, based in part on, um, on new information that came out last week. I think there were some things that uh, tied the uh, Office of the President to um, overruling some academic fraud issues and reinstating a student athlete. Uh, there were some things uh, that uh, were represented in uh, um, in text messages among athletic staff members that uh, both of which were new information. And and I, I guess perhaps the, the the board has been monitoring very closely and had been receiving reports from Baylor over the last uh, four or five board meetings. And uh, I, I think perhaps they reached a little bit of a tipping point where uh, they just said, you know, they're far enough into this process now, we need to make sure that what they say they're doing, they're actually doing. And uh, in order to um, um, put some teeth in that, they, they acted to withhold 25% of Baylor's distributable revenue and, until the verification process is completed. All right, so they're going to hold it. They're not going to split it up amongst themselves. They're going to be like, hey, hey, we got all this money. We want some. They're, they're just holding on? They put, what, they put in an escrow or something? Well, it's, uh, it's held in reserve, uh, which we, we frequently do. Uh, we, we just distributed uh, uh, a, uh, an operating reserve from last fiscal year to our members, and so it's not unusual for us to retain uh, funds of one sort or another, and so that's what we'll do. It's uh, it's certainly not distributed to other members. Uh, it it will um, be held uh, back uh, for the rest of this fiscal year and and on into next fiscal year if uh, if the verification process goes that long. But um, uh, it's uh, it's uh, the board certainly wants to retain all of its prerogatives in terms of of future actions. So. Um, you know, they, they certainly could uh, act to withhold some of it permanently if they chose to, but there's been no discussion of that at this point. They're ticked. I mean, I, I, don't, I don't blame them. They're ticked. They, you know, they had the Pep Hamilton report. They made a coaching change, and then they, they changed the entire staff in the offseason. They thought it was done with, and then there's more stories. And then, of course, the, the strength conditioning coach had to be relieved of his duties after he was less arrested for um, solicitation. I mean, the whole thing, I, I, I can't say that anybody who's a fan or an alum of any of these schools – uh, doesn't uh, doesn't you know? Don't, don't, I don't blame them for being for being upset. Uh, what exactly do they want? What is the process that that they do want Baylor to go through in order to 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 retain this money that they're holding back from them? Well, it's it's really not uh, necessarily about doing what it's necessary to um, to get the money back. Um, I, I just think it's a, a representation of uh, the concern that the board has. And, and I think that, uh, really it's, uh, I, I think it's important to draw the distinction between an investigation and, and a verification process. Uh, you know, we we certainly, uh, expect that, uh, um, whoever we uh, employ to go in and do the, the verification to, would uh, make sure that uh, the best components of good institutional governance are in place, that uh, the university is in, co in uh, complete compliance with, uh, with institutional control, and that, uh, that they are meeting all the stipulations of, uh, of Title IX. And um, as you know, the uh, NCAA is, is uh, looking into a, a number of different things uh, on campus, and um, 
we're, we will yield to their process, but uh, be responsive uh, once uh, their process is completed. Yep. And the same is true with OCR. I mean, we, we aren't going to get in their way. Um, this, is, this is intended to be a cooperative process, but, uh, um, you know, those two are both longer processes than we expect the verification process to be. So, you know, it's possible that we would um, uh, articulate a need for a, a look-in uh, a year from now or something like that. Uh, Baylor's had some other problems. They had a, an academic fraud uh, matter in the late 90s that was a big deal, and then they had the, the uh, problems in the basketball program where one of their student-athletes was actually murdered, and, and there were a lot of uh, issues there uh, 10 years or so ago. And so uh, we want to make sure that it's, this is sustainable so that uh, we aren't going to have these problems in the future. Bob Bowlesby joining us in the Doug Gottlieb Show, CBS Sports Radio. Are you led to believe there are some that have come out and said, especially after the, the recent article you talked about and the accusations, I think it was in the Dallas Morning News or Dallas Times, um, are, are you led to believe that the death penalty would be on the table if the NCAA steps in? Uh, I don't have any idea about that. Um, you know, I, I think that uh, they... They're early in the process of, of looking into NCA violations. Uh, there certainly were a couple of things recently where the antenna would be up of the enforcement staff when when there was talk about lining up um, legal um, legal advice and things like that. You always wonder if it's being provided at the going rate or if it's done pro bono or sure. you know if there are extra benefits involved at some point in time. But uh, you know, the uh, I. I, I think that we're a, a very long ways from any consideration of that sort of thing.